great deal of influence of the government, yeah. that, according to the journalists. At the same time, they yeah, trust, trust yeah. they put a lot of trust in the government, also according to the global kind of, of comparison here. Well, here one has to keep in mind that journalists may not necessarily find it to be uh, negative. I mean, they can still believe that there is great influence of the government and still they can trust the government. Do you see that? They don't necessarily find it completely wrong that there is great influence of the government. Official policy, for example. So they can both trust the government and they can find that there is a great deal of influence. See, so it doesn't have to be a negative aspect. I, I think that's important to keep in mind. Okay, so Abra, uh, the, your question is basically, I think, if the journalists are truly loyal, uh, loyalist, okay? So this gives me a chance to, um, uh, to just explain closer what the study is about. Now, we are trying to find out what the practices are, you know, how they perceive the practices, how the journalists perceive the practices. That does not necessarily mean that they support them in their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so they might be doing um, development reporting. It doesn't mean that they necessarily support it in their mind. So we ask about what, in your daily practice, what is important. Uh, they might support the ruling power in their reporting. It doesn't mean that they do it in their, you know, in their mind. So this study is about the kind of perceptions that the journalists have about their daily work, not about what is you know, their ideal type mindset about some kind of journalism. So one has to differentiate between those two, right? Um, so to your, your question, are they truly loyal? I would say yes, we find that in their daily work they are loyal. It doesn't mean that they are loyal in their mind. They are loyal in their hand. Okay? See the difference? Yeah. Uh, so, shall we call them forced loyalists or loyalists? Sorry? Can we, can we give them this title? Shall yeah. we call them forced loyalists or loyalists? You might have studied the influence of the yeah. government on the news production. Yeah. So, if you have another finding yeah. that they might forcefully or yeah. freely became very loyalists. Yeah. They are, are they forced to be loyalists? And this is a very good question. And this, you know, brings us to the definition of loyalist. What do we mean? But if you're loyal, you sometimes also can be loyal to somebody. You, you might not agree with everything, but you're loyal. Meaning that you, in, you know, in your practice, you kind of support and you don't, you know, and you shut your mouth at times. Okay? So that's also being loyal. Um, but this could be different for different journalists. I mean, some could also be loyal in their yeah. mind. Sure. So they could be different. So the study is not finding out everything. Then you asked about change agent. What is it really? Well, change agent. Um, in the definition of change agent, we include supporting national development. Uh, we include... Um, um, Advocating for social change, um, influencing public opinion. Well, I think in particular those advocating for social change and support national development. I can't quite remember, but we could combine those which are pertinent to the change agent. Um, purpose of religion, uh, asking about the religion. Well, we ask about a number of identifiers in your social group, including gender, including salary, including ethnic group. Now, I didn't speak about ethnic group here. Uh, religion, why did we ask about that? Well, we, it can provide for some interesting analysis. For example, we ask also about, ask about ethical positions. Now, I haven't talked about that here. But we can, for example, use this data to find out if one religion leads to a certain ethical position in a news practice. And I haven't done the analysis, but that's the kind of things that we can analyze here. So uh, you, we ask about a range of things that we can use in the analysis. Um, and then 
Uh, okay, I think I'll go to the next one. Um, Zalalem, how um, in, in, in comparative perspective, how do we compare, did you mean this particularly sub-Saharan African countries? Okay, yeah. So what we can say from this study is that there is particularly one, step, one country that stands out from all of the other sub-Saharan African countries. Okay. It's not Ethiopia, but it's South Africa. South Africa is an outlier. South Africa is different from all the other countries in a lot of you know, uh, points here, including gender in the newsroom, for example, and, and the kind of values that you have supporting national development is not that important there. And this one could link in with democratic levels, of course. Now, this is something that we will do in later analysis. I haven't done it here. But we can find other kinds of statistics to find out about the democratic you know, levels of a country indicators and then link it with journalistic practice and, and perception. So that's a very, very interesting area to, to investigate. And then you ask uh, about Amharic. Did I learn Amharic? And it's right, I write that in my uh, dissertation. But I, th I think I say that the next time I'm writing a dissertation, and I, I haven't written another dissertation yet, so I'm still ex excused. Now, I don't speak Amharic, I, I only understand bits and pieces and some words, I would never, so it's too difficult for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, um, and then about uh, the, uh, the, the differences between those who are educated in journalism, communications, and those who are not. And yes, it could partly explain why there is a lack of a development of a professional culture, because a number of the journalists are not educated in the field, that might be one explanation. However, I'm not convinced that it's the only explanation, because I also truly believe that a journalist can be a very, very good reporter, even if the person does not have journalism education. I believe that, if they are gifted, if they have talent. But I also believe that it's usually a great support to have journalism education. So yes, maybe partly it can explain this. Last question, a very good one also about loyalty. Um, um, aspect of development, yeah. So here, um, the question is about development journalism, right? And yes, this study is underlining to a large degree that development journalism is very much happening in the Ethiopian media. Um, if we look at these supporting national development and advocative and social change, which are two of the main items where you identify the kind of development journalism, is what we find in a number of countries in the south. We find it to a very, very little degree in western countries. So the liberal, critical, watchdog kind of journalism we find to a much lesser extent here. For example, being an adversary of the government. So again, this is something I don't have the full analysis here, but clearly we find that there is a difference here in the role perception of the Ethiopian journalist and a journalist from the, the West. <coughs> Thank you.